What tongue blocking consists of, applying harmonica? Okay. Yeah. I should go over that. Um, the reason I'm bringing up tongue blocking right, right at the beginning is uh, I assume most of you are fans of blues. You got it right. <laughs> When you, when you listen to the old school blues players, or some of the best players that there were, you know, Little Walter, Big Walter, the Sonny Boys, all those guys, the older guys are, are tongue blocking in most of what they're playing. And it's kind of the secret to some of the sounds that they're getting. You know, I kind of realized this after I was playing for about a year. And I was hitting a lot of the right notes, but it still didn't sound the same. You know, I was just trying to pick the brains of other modern players I knew. And, uh, <laughs> And I couldn't figure out how was the equipment. You know, most people go through a phase of, oh, you know, if I got the right mic, it's going to sound just like that record. A lot of it has to do mainly with your technique. And when you're on the harmonica, since you can't see what you're doing in your mouth, it's difficult to figure some of that stuff on your own. And the tongue blocking thing was a big thing for me. I tongue block just about every, everything I play. Um, so it's very. Uh, possible to bend and tongue block and to overblow and tongue block and do all these other things. It's just a matter of getting used to figuring out what muscles you have to use, you know, and getting over certain habits that, that you're doing now if you're not tongue blocking. Or also a big part of it is visualizing the right thing in your head. Again, because you can't see what's going on. A lot of people visualize something in their head that maybe they're doing but is not part of the technique. For instance, when I ask a lot of uh, amateur beginners what they're doing to bend a note with pucker playing, they say the first, usually the first thing they say is they're pulling their tongue back. Which is usually happening, you're pulling your tongue back while they bend a note. But what that means to them also is that, oh, since I'm pulling my tongue back, that means I can't tongue block and bend. Obviously that's not the case, since people tongue block and bend notes. You know, they may be pulling their tongue back, but it's not why they're bending the so a lot of this also has to do with what we're thinking is connected between you know our mouth and our bodies and our techniques and the sounds we're getting out of the heart. Okay. So just keep that in mind because a lot of these things I haven't had any students that couldn't tongue block and bend or couldn't get certain tongue block sounds if they worked at the specific technique. Although a lot of people do give up because it's frustrating at first because it's it's kind of contrary, it's kind of the opposite of habits that they've already built up. At least in their, in their mind, it seems contrary to what they're doing. But a lot of people do give up, which is why a lot, of, a lot more people don't tumble up. Because they start out with other playing. Is there, if you were to try and get the technique, and because I, I find that bending like three draw on a C is, is a lot harder than doing it on an A. Is there a, a particular Harp, you'd recommend that we try, you know, we try to get that on? Well, you know, it's different for every person. Uh -huh. um, the bending technique, without, I'm going to get into bending in a little bit, but without getting too far into it right now, just to give you an answer, the bending technique is going to be different for each note you want to bend. Okay? Your technique is going to be dependent on how high or how low that note is. Okay? And because everybody's built different, everybody's voice sounds different, everybody's more comfortable in a particular range. You know, you may be more comfortable on an A harp and I may be more comfortable on a low F harp. You know, it's just kind of how our bodies are built and the sounds that we can get out of, you know, out of our embouchures, our throat and our mouth and everything. So everybody's going to be a little different with that, for sure. But the bending technique will be different for each note and obviously, therefore, for each harp. I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, basics. Everybody take out a harp. Let me see how you hold one. I'll just grab a C because I'm sure most people have a C. You only have a B. That's all right. Can we do some stuff? It's okay to record, right? Uh, sure, as long as you're not going to sell it on email. Oh, no. If I do, I'll give you the proceeds, but I never will. <laughs> Personal. 
Right now, most people are showing me this school. I, I know other people use that very effectively. Um, however, when I went to use a boat mic and when I and also acoustic and amplifier, when I tried to get a good wawa a hand treble effect, um, I found it very difficult to block all the air completely in my hole with this one. And uh, what I found works well. I have a C, but we're not going to... No, that's right. We're not going to. Yeah. It takes a while, just like thumb blocking. It's going to take a while to get used to a new grip. You know, but, but give it time. I haven't had one person who hasn't been happy with the, the effects they get with their thumbs up. Did you start that way? Or did you... I, no, I didn't start that way. I went through a couple different grips, including, you know, so, so the way I would start that is with my left hand down, the, the face of the harmonica is pretty much flush with the side of my hand. Right, right, it's pretty much going right in there. Okay. Right, right in there. Right. And you basically would do the same thing with the other hand. Thumbs up and surrounding the whole corner of the harmonica. This way you're blocking the air going out of the sides as well. So then you look at it and say, How am I going to get your mouth to do? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. You work at it. <laughs> um, but the point is, you can, be, you can get a very effective airtight grip with that. There's no way you could get that of an airtight, that airtight of a grip if you're not completely surrounding the sides of the heart. Especially if you're playing like a marine band that has holes on the sides or some other harmonicas that have holes on the sides. A lot of those guys play marine bands. I know a lot of the other harps don't have holes on the sides, but you're still going to leak some air in the corner on the bottom. And even if you're doing that, a lot of times there's air leaking on the bottom as well with your thumb. So if you have your thumbs up, kind of creating that V shape in there. So we're we're more that to be airtight. Well, you want to be able to get it airtight. Okay? You want to have black and white so you can get all the shades of gray you want. Okay? The white, you know, for this example, would be an open grip. Right. You know, you want to be able to project sometimes and get a brighter sound, you know, more treble sound. But you also want to be able to get a darker, you know, okay. completely airtight grip so you can control all the different parts of it. You know, it's very difficult to get an airtight grip with your thumb underneath. I found, I found a few people that can get pretty good, but most, most find it difficult to get a really effective airtight grip with your thumb underneath. Okay. So you want to be able to get it airtight, but obviously you're not going to use it like that all the time. You know, it's just going to help you control the air going in and around. And then the real, the real trick to seeing how good you are at this eventually is to see if you can not play at all because air won't even come in your grip. Oh. Yeah, no, just kind of bend down because there's no air coming in at all. Now that, that will take a while. But the key is you want to, you're going to basically fill in that gap with your face, your chin, your cheek. If you notice when it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it will take a little while. But if you, you notice, you
coming out of the back. I was just controlling it with my hands. Another good thing to do if you want to work on your grip is do what you're doing right now and look in front of the mirror. See what you're leaking on the back. Now you can, you can see this. You got that whole spot on the right. side. And you can go there. Right, but try to get it as close as you see the right. Get, get the handle around. Right. 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 Definitely want to try to relax your hands and your shoulders.